beautiful friends it's Amanda here and today we're talking about the latest release from Huda Beauty I am talking of course about the Icy Nude collection this collection is currently available and there are a bunch of pieces in here Huda Beauty was kind enough to send over the whole collection to me so we're gonna take a look at everything up close and personal of course I'm gonna give you some swatches an application demo and of course I'm also gonna do a few palette comparisons for you Aside from this Icy Nude palette, the collection also has one of the infamous face glosses, three faux filler lip glosses, two new shades of their blush filter liquid blushes. We have a lot to cover in this video, so let's start with the lip colors first. These are the faux filler lip glosses, and they're priced at 19 US dollars a piece. There are three shades in this Icy Nude collection. Now this faux filler gloss formula launched earlier this year and I enjoy this one a lot more than I expected to. I am very much not a fan of plumping, tingling, stinging type of glosses and these say that they have a plumping effect but I don't really feel that stingy, tingly, pepperminty. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I don't get that sensation from these glosses. These glosses have the exact same packaging as the original release of this line, and I do want to mention that these faux filler glosses have a sweet vanilla scent. It's not incredibly overwhelming, but I do like to mention when makeup is scented if I notice it. The three shades in the Icy Nude collection all have a little bit of a pink shimmer to them. You'll see in the lip swatches, but I think that She Glitzy and She Flirty, the clear and pink glosses, pretty much look almost exactly the same on me. So I would recommend going with one or the other when it comes to those two glosses. My personal favorite of the lip colors is the brown gloss. It shows up the most on me and it just has a really beautiful, warm, nudie appearance on the lips that I really like. As far as this collection goes, I think these lip colors are fine. I like the formula. I don't think they're super wow adding so much to the Icy Nude collection as a whole, but they make sense. They're sparkly little glosses. I think that they're kind of middle of the road for me, but if this is the type of product you're into, I don't think you'll be disappointed by these. Now, something that is not middle of the road for me are these blush filter liquid blushes. I gave these a rave review. This is also a new formula to the Huda Beauty line this year, and I am a huge fan of these. I was hoping for some more colors and I really like both of the shades included in this Icy Nude collection. We have a slightly lighter, slightly warmer blush called Latte and then something a little bit deeper with more of a chocolatey berry type of tone and that one is called Coco Loco. These have the exact same style of packaging as the original blush filter release with the little sort of peanut shaped applicator, which is definitely different and works really well for this particular product, especially because you really don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. These are very buildable. You can shear them out for a little wash of color cheek or you can really blend and layer them up for a more dramatic look. I personally really get on well with this formula. I'm going to link my faux filter gloss and blush filter liquid blush reviews down in the description box if you want to hear more about my thoughts on these newer product lines. Now we have the Icy Nude Face Gloss. The shade is called Frostbite, and this is definitely a hot button type of product. It has an extremely unique look combined with this 
pH reactive pigment that's always kind of in and out of the beauty world in terms of popularity. This does, in my opinion, have a very off-putting appearance in the pan. I do think it looks like a Petri dish. It definitely is something. I feel like, at, hey, some positive points. This gets people talking. This gets a reaction. And it's not a terrible strategy as far as that goes. I will not fault the brand. And ultimately, I will say this looks a lot prettier applied to the skin than I expected. Usually these pH reactive pigments just come off as a very bright pink that kind of clashes with my skin tone, in my opinion, a lot of the time. And this definitely has a little icy softness, kind of a baby pink frosty type of look that I actually think is kind of pretty. I, I like the appearance of this on the skin a lot more than I thought I was going to. So even though I find the appearance of the actual product to be off-putting, I guess is the word, this does frankly look really pretty on, I have to say. So I'm going to show you what I mean instead of just telling you what I mean because we're going to see some of the cheek products in action. I'm going to put Latte on one side and I'm going to blend that one with my finger and then I'm going to put Coco Loco on the other side and I'm going to blend that one with a brush just so that you can see both colors applied to the cheeks and you can see some different methods. It just depends on what you're most comfortable with. These blushes work really well for me with either method. I do gravitate more towards using a stippling brush because it's just very, very quick and easy, but fingertip application and blending works just as well for me in terms of the ultimate look of the blush. Here's Coco Loco in action, and it's definitely more of a berry-ish type of color versus Latte, which is more of a terracotta on my skin anyway. These are both beautiful. I love both shades, and I see myself wearing these quite a bit. So I'm very, very happy. Spoiler alert, the blushes are my favorite piece in this collection. So for Frostbite, the face gloss, I am just going to kind of go right in the middle here and pick up some of the gloss and then some of those little pigment pearls. I have to be honest, I think this actually looks pretty cute on. It's still not something that I can see myself being obsessed with. But I do think that it looks good. It's not nearly as sticky and tacky feeling on the face as I expected. It doesn't dry all the way down. It still retains a little bit of that gloss moisture feeling. But I didn't feel like my hair was getting stuck to my face. And honestly, it's never going to be my favorite. But I do think it looks quite a bit better than I expected. Let's move on to the Icy Nude eyeshadow palette. This one is retail priced at $69 US dollars. It has 18 eyeshadow shades, and this has a very minimal, sleek brown and silver packaging. Huda palettes have a locking clasp closure instead of a magnetic closure and a nice big mirror in here. I use the mirrors in my palettes a lot, so that's definitely an important detail for me personally, just as a consumer, as a makeup user. This is a very matte eyeshadow heavy palette. There are 11 matte eyeshadows in here. There's one glitter shade. That's the one on the bottom row there called Bling. And then the remaining six eyeshadows have a variety of different shimmer finishes. So VVS and Diamond Dew are those really foily, quite thick, bouncy type of metallic shades. And Iced Out is very sheer, has a transparent base, more of a 
topper type of shadow. You'll really get a feel for what I mean by those descriptors when you see these all swatched out. First, you're just going to see the whole palette swatched together. The top row are finger swatches, the bottom row are brush swatches done with a flat eyeshadow brush. I don't use any primer, I don't dampen my brush or anything like that. That way you can see the shadows applied straight to my skin and then when I do my application demo you can see what these look like on top of an eyeshadow primer. Overall this color scheme is quite light. There are not even a lot of mid-tones in here, really only two dark shades, which I can see making sense in the icy nude theme, but then I do feel like it's a bit odd that the palette isn't more shimmer heavy. Ultimately, for me, I can see this functioning really well in my personal makeup collection and in my personal style as a great supplemental palette, more of a companion palette. Don't get me wrong, I've done a few looks with this palette now and I've really enjoyed a couple of different shadow combos just from this as a standalone palette, but ultimately I do see this functioning for me first and foremost as a companion to maybe round out another palette that needs a boost in neutrals. I will say my one big gripe with this palette is probably something you're already anticipating me saying, and that's the fact that I just don't like that there's a glitter shade in here. Again, I do think it makes sense with this icy nude theme, and I know a lot of people love these straight up glitters, and that's fine. I'm not going to take anything away from that. Personally, for me, it's just something I really, really don't like to have in my eyeshadow palettes. Since a glitter like this is not something that I'm going to personally be able to make use out of, it does lower the overall use value for the palette for me. And whether I am doing a review for your information or if I'm just evaluating a product on my own for my own use, I really very highly factor in the use value of any product for myself or for reviews, really. That is such a high priority for me, just personally. And having a glitter shade in a palette always just knocks down that use value. So it's not a deal breaker. There are plenty of palettes that I've really, really loved that had a glitter or even multiple glitters in them. The ColourPop It's a Mood Mega Palette immediately comes to mind, for example. So it's not a deal breaker, but it is something that I just sort of wish wasn't in there. And if you are somebody who loves glitters, I'm not dissing on that. I don't want to come to your house and take away your glitter eyeshadows or anything like that. Honestly, it's just my personal preference doesn't include glitters. So, but I still love you. I still love your face. Now, I am going to give voiceover Amanda a break because I have been talking for a really long time and I'm about to talk some more. So while you watch me finish this really cute little sultry, smoky spotlight eye look, I'm going to play you a little tune and then I will be back.
I have to say, I love the way this whole makeup look came together. I've really enjoyed using the blushes and this Icy Nude palette in particular since this PR package arrived to me. I am a huge fan of the Huda Beauty eyeshadow formulas and ultimately a palette for me from them often just boils down to whether or not I connect with the color story. And I have to say, as far as the big palettes go, this one is kind of middle of the road for me. We've seen so many neutral palettes from the brand over the past few years that I was wishing for something a little bit more in line with my beloved Mercury Retrograde. But I did want to show you some quick side-by-side -side looks at Icy Nude with some of the more recent big palettes from Huda Beauty. Last year's palette was pretty grunge and obviously these are two sides of the same coin. Pretty grunge is a lot darker but these two would work very very nicely together and the year before that we had the Empowered palette. This one is very clearly much warmer, a lot more orangey. I think we'd be hard pressed to find really any shadows that were comparable between those two. Rose Quartz is the most similar to Icy Nude in my opinion. It definitely has that overall really light tone type of feeling to it and I think if we swatched these side by side they'd be for sure the most similar of any of these Huda palettes. Rose Quartz obviously is just a lot more pinky purpley whereas Icy Nude is very neutral. And then the last one I want to show you is the Naughty Nude palette. This is very, very red toned. Again, I think Icy Nude is a great companion to every single one of the palettes we've seen here side by side. I just don't think that swatch comparisons would be very fruitful. However, I do have some great ColourPop comparisons. If you have the 1111 and of quartz palettes from ColourPop, then you can pretty much dupe this icy nude palette. Just some of those silvery shimmer shades and obviously the glitter are the big differences there. But I do think that these would be pretty much the same eye looks. Even more so, in my opinion, is the Stone Cold Fox palette. The ColourPop Mega palettes are really just my comparison heroes. That very peachy matte shade on the far end, I didn't really have a good match for that or of course the glitter, but in general I would say these are incredibly, incredibly similar. If you're just drawn to the shades in Icy Nude and you already have Stone Cold Fox on hand, then you're already covered. This will hopefully help you resist the urge, resist the FOMO. I also like giving you some good ColourPop alternatives because even these mega palettes are significantly less pricey than the Huda Icy Nude. So it could be a great, more affordable option for you if you're into this color story but looking for maybe just a slightly smaller price tag. Hopefully I was able to give you a good reference point with these comparison swatches. This collection as a whole I like quite a bit. I think it's cohesive. I think it's very, very palatable across the board between makeup lovers, people who are really active in the beauty community, but I think this also has a lot of appeal, especially the glosses and the palette. For people who wear makeup maybe even daily, but they aren't really invested in the new releases and the more enthusiast side of the beauty community. I think this has a lot of mass appeal. A lot of people reach for colors like this all the time. Personally, the palette for me is only my second favorite piece in the collection. I really like the Huda eyeshadow formulas. It's something that I do get along with quite well and I find myself reaching for a lot, especially for these more staple neutral type of colors. So I do see myself getting a lot of use out of this palette. From my perspective, maybe it's a little bit 
boring. It's not really the most exciting color story, but I do think that it'll be useful. If anything, I wish there was a little bit more spice in the color, and I wish there was a little bit more depth. This is a lot lighter. I mean, it's icy. It makes sense that it's not leaning towards the sultry, rich colors as much. It's giving us what it promised. It's icy and it's nude, so I'm not mad at it. For me, the really exciting thing in this collection are the new blush filters. I went crazy for this formula when it released a few months ago, and in my review video, I'm pretty sure I said I wished that they would release more colors, and I got my wish. I think these are both super beautiful. I really enjoy working with this formula. I have reached for the previous colors a lot since they released, and I'm happy to be able to add two more to my collection because... I really like the way these feel. I like the way they apply. I like the way they wear. And these new colors are beautiful. So the blushes are my top pick from the collection. And then the palette is in second place. I can kind of take or leave the face gloss and the lip glosses. I just don't feel as compelled towards those products. But I'm really excited about these blushes, and I'm definitely going to be making more use of this palette in the future. Even though it's not the most unique in my collection, it does seem like it's going to be a reliable staple neutral, so I'm always happy to have that in my collection, even if I already have a few. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about this Icy Nude collection. Are you interested? Have you already been shopping for this? Maybe during the Sephora sale? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! All right, let's try that again. Doing great. Doing great. Okay, that wasn't helpful at all. Great. Try that again. It's going well. What? 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 Okay. I'm sweating, but then if I take off my sweater, then I'm cold. Silvery fall leaf earrings for a little silvery wintry look. Okay. This reminds me of... Uh, these are so similar. Oh my gosh. Come on now. This is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Opal. So, here you go. You heard it here first. Or maybe you didn't. I know. Somebody else probably already figured that out, but I knew this looked familiar. Let's see if they're actually similar or not. Okay, that's the Huda one. I mean, it's like a little pink sparkly gloss. Of course they're similar, but we have to swatch them for science. Okay, now let's do the Maybelline one. The Huda one's a little bit more pigmented, but I'm telling you right now, these are going to look exactly the same. That's the Huda one. This is the Maybelline one. This one's like a little bit more peachy pink. This one's more pinky pink. And this one's got a little bit more pigmentation to it. But these are really close. On the lips, these are going to look exactly the same. Let's just be real. And look how much of that gloss I've used. It's fine. I fixed it. Can you make yourself make sense, please? They're just not my favorite. That's I'll put it that way. It's just not my favorite. Do you have a guilty pleasure, like something you know is super, super cringe, but you still enjoy it? I have a lot. I I like a lot of like cringy and trashy things. I don't care. Right now, I've been binge watching uh, Love Island to disassociate from reality. And um, it's working really well for me. And I love saying really weird British slang words to my husband and confusing him. <laughs> That's like my new favorite pastime. I like all kinds of cringe things. You guys already know that I love the Twilight movies. So, cringe queen, it me. Oop, oop, sorry, sorry, I bumped ya. You okay? You okay there? Sorry about that. Nice. Good work, Amanda. That was me giving myself a high five because I'm my only coworker. Sad. It's going great. Don't worry, it's going great. Can you tell? Can you tell? Okay, I'm really and truly sweating now. You know what? You're doing great. You're doing your best, and that's all anybody can ask of any of us. So you just, you just keep doing your best, all right? You got this. I'm pretty sure we all got this, but I don't know. I can't, I can't say with 100% certainty, but 
we're doing our best. It's fine. All right. I love each and every one of your beautiful, shining faces. And I will see you real soon in my next video. Okay. Bye.